Hi there, folks. Welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I'm your host, Michael. Uh, I'm also the film editor, the mechanic, the keeping track of all my stuff. I'm the everything here, guys. It's a one, one man show at this point in time. Oh, I'm glad that's cooled off. All right. We're back on getting the good enough trailer into shape with this video. We've got several things going on here. This was the post. This was the the you know the cranky winch thing that was on the front of the boat originally and what was there originally i uh had a piece like this okay it wasn't like this it was this piece and because it was a v-bow the v-bow just laid in here and i was thinking wow can i repurpose this and can, you know i like to repurpose everything i can because you know we're making it just good enough we're not trying to restore this thing we're not trying to make it pristine we're not trying to get rid of all the rust we're just trying to make it i've said it enough Good enough. So what I did here, get you looking at this. This was the original setup on the boat. What has changed here, let me get you centered up here a little bit. Let's move this over. Um, this piece was about yay tall. I cut it off and just guessing, right? I just eyeballed it and go, yeah, I don't want this much sticking up here. So I whacked it off that far down and almost screwed it up because right now I'm at the top here and I needed 31 inches because I'm going to take this joker here, right here, and we're going to turn it sideways and we're going to put it up on here like this. This way I can actually pull the boat up, bam, into here. And I might have to have a stop on it or something. I haven't decided yet, but I like the idea that it can actually kind of hit and line up maybe have a limited range of movement, uh, maybe welding some tabs on here so it only comes back so far. But we'll figure out what that is and then I can tighten this down. But the winch part, we'll mount up right here. And my goal with this winch, this is an interesting winch. This one will just freewheel. And probably just, you know, once it gets going, just beat the crap out of you. But the goal is to have this hook through here and this would be a lot easier if it was all bolted down but that way the goal would be there's a hook on the front of the john boat that this would come through hook on the front of the john boat pull through here through this gap right you see right here pull through this gap pull the front of the boat you know because the front of the boat's got like a radius on it the front of the boat would come through here the hooks right here trapezoid right it's just completely trapped so that's what we're that's kind of the idea behind this. Um, but uh, anyway, this is, how, this is how I'm repurposing this part of it. So what I need to do now, I've done a tiny bit of fabrication here. I've got U-bolts here kind of temporarily holding, holding things in place. I need to take this piece back off right here. And I want to drill a hole through it so I can put a bolt through it to hold this in place. And I'm only using one bolt so that this thing can actually, you know, pivot back and forth if it needs to, for whatever reason. If they have a hit it a little crooked, it could kind of eat it a little bit. But uh, that's, that's the idea behind this. And what I'm gonna, right now, I've just got some temporary half inch socket head cap screw bolts in here to kind of uh, just mocking this up. I'll run to the store later and I'll get me some actual bolts that I want to use on here. And I'll use nylock nuts so I can tighten them up just tight enough that things move, but that way they won't back off on me. So, did I accidentally weld that to that? We'll get the tiny hammer out and there we go. I think that's gonna work pretty good. I'm gonna clean it up, drill that hole, and we'll be back over here to mock it up here in just a second. And then we'll take a look at what it looks like on the boat. Okay, we got our hole drilled in it. Let's mock it back up here. I think in there. Okay. I 
You guys can probably hear my old windmill howling in the background. Had a few of you asking, hey, could you give us a little, uh, tell us what your windmill's all about? We'll take a couple minutes and do that in this video for you guys, since you ask. Okay. I should be able to. Bam, bam. It's just tight enough I can move it a little. Oops. Come on, hands. There. Now, these things look a little tough and rough. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, but the nice thing is I can buy new ones of these and stick on here and replace those. Replace on them pretty darn easy. All right, so far so good. I'm not hating on that. I'm gonna need some more half inches here. Keep that in position. I think I want to go ahead and stick the winch on. Because when we take it out there to hook it up, we'll we'll make sure that everything flows. Flows and goes where I want it to want it to go. I'm going ahead and bolting this down more permanent because this piece here is galvanized. It won't need any paint. The rest of it I might clean up and throw a little paint on. Just because we got a fresh trailer tongue there, let's make it look a little bit better, I guess. So all I really need to paint is this tube. This piece is up here are aluminum. So I just gotta clean this piece up. The other thing you might notice on this piece, might be hard to see, see these rusty spots right here? Through here, in the middle of the tube? Well, what somebody did in their infinite wisdom, wisdom, this thing has a drain hole on the bottom to let water get out. With this being open on the top, water got in and made this tube, you know, when it gets in and it freezes, it freezes and expands. And it was neat to see it expanded on both sides of where the U-bolt used to be but it didn't, you know, it goes, it's humped up here, flat, humped up on the other side. But we're gonna cap this off so this is welded in with a cap so no water gets down in here. If it does, I'm gonna leave the hole on the bottom to let the stuff get out. All right, we've got this ready to go set on the boat trailer and see what happens. I don't know. The bottom's pretty, rough it's gonna scratch up my paint not sure i like that maybe just maybe i'll hit that with the old disc sander we'll make that a little smoother and then while, while we're mocking it up i might put tape on it and then once i paint it i don't care after that once it's bolted in place permanently I'm gonna go ahead and put some blue tape over this while I'm setting it on that trailer tongue. It'll help protect that tongue that's out there. Like I said, once I get this painted and it's bolted in place, I won't care what happens underneath there. They can rust and become one again. <laughs> Possibly, maybe not.
All right. Let's take her outside, clamp her down. All right, there it is in place. Uh, the only thing that's wrong is this hook's a little big to fit into the hole on the trailer, but this here's gonna, you know, fit up nice and tight against here. You know, once I get new ones, once this is pulled up, it'll kind of break into the new ones and it's gonna, you know, lock things down on the front. It, that's why with this here, it can't come up and out. It's pulled down. There'll be a safety chain that's hooked in here that I can come in here and also hook into this as well. Uh, I think that's gonna work really well. All I got left to do now is cap this off. Uh, I'm gonna cap this off, and then we'll disassemble, then paint the parts. And, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm stoked at how well this worked out and how good it looks. And, uh, you know, just got to use a lot of the pieces. That's awesome. It's cold out here, it's windy. Woo! So here, that's the windmill on top of my building. Spend it at a, it was spinning at a billion RPMs, but now it kind of goes up and down, up and down. But uh, basically what that is, is this is from Missouri Wind and Solar. I bought it many, many years ago and installed it in my other house. And when I moved here over 10 years ago, brought it here. Let's go inside and look at the electronic part of it. Okay, the way this works is the wire that's coming off the windmill comes through right here, goes right here to this converter. What this does is it takes uh, three-phase power right here, turns it into 12-volt power. So that's what this whole little unit right here does, converts it from three-phase to 12-volt DC. Then they're connected up here to these power inverters. And you see these lights are going blink, 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 versus just flickering. That's when it's generating power. Now these then convert to... 12 volt DC power and to 110 AC. And here you can see it's plugged right in to the outlet. So this is called a grid tie inverter. And what it does is tie back into the electrical grid. Now, when these things do not detect power, they will not let any power go through it. That's a safety feature. You definitely don't want to have something, somebody working on a power line thinking it's dead out there and you're putting, you know, 120 volts back out to the grid and you can kill somebody. So that's why these things automatically shut down when they don't detect power from the outlet. What this is over here, both of this is a dump load and each one of these has two dump load coils basically. They're like a heater coil. And what they do is this thing is generating way too much power. It'll dump the excess power into these and, and consume the electricity, you know, through resistance and creating basically a heating element. That's all there is to it. I should say that's all there is to it. There's, there's something to it, but it's relatively simple. Anyway, enough, enough talk about that. There's, uh, this is uh, probably 15 to 17 years old now. Uh, maybe not quite. Yeah, but at least 15 years old. I've had this whole setup. Uh, moved it from one location to the other. And we just let it sit there and create juice on windy days. Now, the other thing I have with this setup that'll be handy if I need to is if this particular uh trailer with the rollers if i take the rollers out and put bunks on it i'm probably going to lower this thing about six inches on the trailer altogether and i've got more than six inches with the travel here so i can bring this whole thing right down just by loosening four nuts lower it down retighten it and i'm back in business so there's some flexibility there we're going to get busy now i'm going to disassemble this piece uh, cause I got this piece here. I want to paint under here. I'll take this off, clean it up, put a cap in it. We'll get this ready to paint and then we'll get some hardware. First thing I'm going to do is measure get my measurements for my hardware to make sure I get all the stuff I need in one trip. Just so happen to have my cardboard notepad and my tape measure. All right. So it looks like here I'd like to have at least Quit doing that. And get away with an inch and a half bolt. So half by one and a half.
Oh, my battery died before I got this painted for you. But we got it all painted, top, bottom. We got our bracket painted. We'll get back to putting this back together in just a minute. But in the meantime, while, you know, paint's drying, I had to do some other stuff. So I opted to put some new casters, and you're hard to see it here, but new casters on my, my engine hoist. Some bigger, heavier duty casters because when it was rolling around before, I was having trouble moving it. And now these metal wheels are probably still kind of okay. But what happened here is the bearings that were in here, <laughs> they, they fell out. They're gone. And that's the ones that take all the, the, you know, this back and forth. So I went to the store, picked up four more, and then realized you need six. So I went back to the store and got two more. And now we have six. Now we're going to go ahead and bolt this back on. I'm trying to remember how it went. We're going to bolt this back onto the base piece here, or the, you know, the upper part, and get her going again. But yeah, it should be a lot nicer now. This has got some heft to it, but it should roll around on the floor much better. Oh yeah. Now we jacked her up a little taller here, but that's going to be okay. If I got to get underneath something, it's just going to have to be something that's a little taller. All right. Now, do I dare set this back on top and try to do it that way or another way? Or I don't know. Let's see here. It gets kind of heavy. But you know what? I got an anti-heavy device. We'll just pick it up with the old chain hoist here. Or the, not the chain hoist, but the overhead, you know, picker upper device. Man, that's gonna roll so much nicer. Let's get some weight to her. Whoa, don't be doing that on me. As you can see, this thing moves around really nice and slick now, which is really fun. Way better than what it was. Boy, I ain't kidding you. I could barely move this thing around before, but now I like it. I like it a lot. It's gonna be much better. You better bet we put the big wheels on the other end too. She's good to go. Better than new. Might almost be excited to use this next go around. But with any luck, the last two boats I bought, they can keep their engines intact. That is a absolute pleasure to move around now. Put a little cardboard down because you know we don't want to scratch our new paint on the bottom the scratches are going to happen on that naturally over time with it clamped down to the bottom of the tongue trailer tongue top of the trailer tongue i guess last we left off this is going to hang on here
Something a little, oh, that one's a slide easy now. Stay. Need my clamps. Yep, just scratch the crap out of it, Michael. And we went to the hardware store, picked us up some more stuff. That turned out nice once I get this where I want it. This rubber is going to flex and all that fun stuff, so we'll have new uh, bolts. I've got new rubbers coming. These were uh, should be here maybe as early as tomorrow, but they're going to be three inches instead of these two and a three quarter ears. So I bought some longer bolts that should accommodate the extra length without any issue. The cool part about what I've done here is if I decide at some point in time this is going back on a V bow, v bow boat, all I got to do is pull these bolts out, pull this little bracket I made out, turn it back sideways and stick it on there. V bow. We didn't destroy anything. If anything, we made it more versatile. Like the old boy I used to work with said, if you can't make it right, you better make it adjustable. The cool part is I do have stainless bolts to go through the trailer, around the trailer tongue and up through here with some stainless washers and some nylock nuts. So when I fasten this down, she's locked. And I ain't kidding you, that's going to be pretty solid. Now the only issue I have now is this hook. Stop. This hook is way too big to fit in the bow of my boat. So... Let's just cut it off. You guys are probably going, you just cut that perfectly good, perfectly good strap. Well, it wasn't going to work. I'll sew another hook on there. I know how. But now i got to find me a hook. You guys might be asking yourself, Michael, what the heck's that you got on your bench now? Well, this is my 1960 single stitch Singer sewing machine. And I've got upholstery thread in here. And if you guys haven't messed with upholstery thread, I guarantee you, you can't wrap it around your fingers and break it without cutting your fingertips off. It's that strong. I've sewed up many a strap, lifting strap for myself. I've actually picked up the whole back end of a fiberglass boat with a 2.5 liter in it with my cherry picker with a strap that I sewed up. Yeah, I didn't get underneath it, but it's strong. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this up. And, uh, We'll get my new hook all done. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do like they did. I'm going to do a little zigzag. I'm going to go down the length of it first. And then I'll just do some zigging and some zagging. They kind of did something like this on the other strap.
we go. Get rid of the excess thread here. There we go. That's uh, going nowhere. Now what I did up here is I folded, I cut it off, folded it under, stitched that in first, and then we've done our zigzag stitch up and down the length of this. We're good to go. I'll stick this back on the shelf until I need to make another strap. There we go. We got a hook that'll fit in the bow of the boat now. And we got a safety chain that'll fit in the same hook hole. We should be pretty good. All we got left to do is get our black pieces up here. Then we can put this on the boat. And everything's happy with the world. I like how this has turned out so far. It's pretty darn cool. All right, let's set this aside and get on with our next piece we need to do a little restoration on before we put it back on the boat. Trailer. All right, next order of business is my trailer tongue jack. This is one that came off here. Man, it looks like this thing, I don't, looks like it's been drugged sideways down the highway at some point in history. But that's okay. It's a little crusty. It's a little rusty. I'm gonna leave it. I ain't gonna fix that. What I will do is once I done, I'm gonna pull this wheel off, throw a little grease inside just for, you know, fun. And then, uh, then I'm gonna spray it down with some PB Blaster so that the, you know, spring and everything moves like it should. But the other pieces I need to fix are these pieces that hook it to the trailer. We're gonna flatten them back out a little bit. We're gonna get a wire wheel on them and then we'll shoot them with some silver paint same with the bolts, I'll wire wheel them, shoot them with some silver paint. And then this will be done and ready to go back on. We're getting really, really close here. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer tomorrow and I'm gonna be able to get out there and possibly put that hitch on there. I wanna put this trailer tongue jack on there. I wanna hook it up to the back of my vehicle and possibly bring that boat around and I'm gonna see if I can snake it in here into the shop somehow so I can work on them tail lights and get the tail lights and all that stuff built and put into place. Then that trailer's ready for my license plate to be bolted on. And we gotta wire up the lights. And then she's ready to go to the lake. I got my spare tire mount too. I got one of those laying around here. I got a spare tire mount we're gonna put on the tongue as well. So we're getting really close. Stick with me. Oh, what? Somebody was asking, <laughs> it was you over there, wasn't it? Where's my, I don't, oh my goodness. Somebody out there is asking, what's that paper in your pocket? Well, I'm going to tell you what the paper in the pocket is. You watch the video this far in. There's, a, there's people out there that guessed. It's been almost four weeks ago because I went down for about three weeks and didn't get much videoing done. But I had somebody guessing the weight of that Bayliner boat. And whoever got the closest to it without going under or over yeah that doesn't matter but you needed to be in the continental united states because i can't you cost a fortune to ship it outside the u.s folks and i'm sorry about that but i have two people so the boat weighed wait for it 1911 pounds that's what the boat weighed at the dump that's what the scales told me and the math said 1911 pounds I had two of you guess 1,911 pounds. But, uh, and some of you might say, well, just give them both a hat. Sorry, I don't come from the participation trophy generation. You win and you lose. We have one winner and you have second place, which is first loser. I'm just saying, that's the way I roll. So, I've got a washer that has a 3LL and I have a washer that has nothing on the back so the three ll is going to be heads which i have a person at the top of this list I'll put it let me fold this up here so you know i'm not messing around this was a person 
that gets 2,000 pounds. Sorry, Randy. And this one here, we have one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay? Top is heads, bottom is tails on my list here. So we're going to flip it. Oh, right there. Can't tell which way it is, but it's just a washer. It's heads. See right there? I'll get you in there. That's heads. It's got a 3LL right there on the top. Well, let me show you who's on the list. Can you see that? Does a, does a GoPro get there close enough? On the top, Mitch Z period. Mitch Z period. You're the winner. Go down in the description of any of my videos. You'll see my email and shoot me an email. Preferably go down to the description in this video, send me an email and we'll connect and I'll get you, get your email or mailing address and uh, we'll get you a hat. Congratulations. Uh, Philip, I'm sorry. Keep trying. I'll be giving away more hats in the future. Appreciate your folks leaving video or leaving videos. I'm leaving the videos. You guys, I appreciate you guys leaving the comments, participating, give me the thumbs up on a regular basis. Uh, you guys are doing some fantastic things for me. I appreciate it to no end. My wife appreciates it as well. I mean, we're trying to grow this channel and turn it into something fun. Keep it going, keep expanding it. Keep, let's just keep working on a lot of really cool stuff. Sorry, the heater's making a lot of noise in the background. Let me put my coin away. But anyway, back to the show here. We're going to get down here and clean these up and shoot them up and get this thing, you know. This wheel's got a lot of, a lot of wear in it, but come on, it's just a wheel on the front of a trailer. They don't put a lot, you don't put a lot of miles on them. So I'm not going to waste your time showing you taking this little wheel off, greasing it, and cleaning these up and spray painting them. We'll show you what the results are here in a bit. Whew, that water's cold. Hey folks, welcome back. We're back out here. We got our parts prepped and ready in the shop. The sun is in my face. I'm absor absorbing as much vitamin D as I possibly can. I tell you what, we've had such an overcast, cloudy snow. I mean, you can't tell it by here, but spin you around. Look at that. Look at that. That's remnant, 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 rem you know, leftovers from just uh, last Thursday. We've been getting 10 inches of snow, five inches of snow, nothing but slush, nothing but rain. I mean, cold, freeze. It's 20 degrees this morning, 40 degrees now. I don't know. It's been a mess. Anyway, the good news is the sun's out. I'm here in the daylight. I got parts to put on the trailer. We're gonna start off by putting the wheel hubs back on. I'm gonna show you how, you know, we packed them and everything. We're gonna stick them on here. I'm gonna show you a quick little thing of how I adjust them. And we'll put the cotter pin in them, we'll slap the wheels back on, and we'll get to putting all the other purdies that we fixed up on the front of the trailer tongue. So without further ado, let's get in here and let's do this, uh, you know, wheel hub thing and put a tire on it. Now, I think I may have mentioned this earlier in the video. When I pulled these wheel hubs off, I left all the grease right where it was. Why? Because it ended up being over four weeks before I get back to this. And that grease that's on the axle actually protected it from rusting. So as you can see here, zero rust. We're gonna flush it a little bit with some brake clean just to make sure she's good and clean everywhere. The seal area is good and clean. And then we'll go grab the hub and we'll stick that on. We got our properly packed wheel bearing with the seal in place and the seal's been greased up and Now me, I tighten these up to just basically kind of seat it. You know, that's too tight there. So you back it off to the next hole 
and that'll be perfect to stick our cotter pin in. Smooth as butter. All right, we'll go do the other side. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I just know that I don't like wrestling with my trailer jack and my chains and anything else in between when I'm trying to operate the trailer jack or hook up my trailer. So, but the other advantage to having this extra length of tongue is I can easily, see back here, this groove here is a lot wider than this groove. So I'm pretty sure this is going easier. Oh yeah, fits the trailer better. Eats up a little more bolt for me, but it's also further away, but that's okay. That's how these bend a little bit. All right, he sprayed some lube in this thing and she works like a dream now. They able to crank that front high enough up that I can just take this right on out. Think I can just push this off those jack stands or not? I think I can. Bada boom, bada bing. Oh, this bad boy wants to roll. Got some good bearings under, some good grease in the front part here. This rock wants to roll. There. How much tongue weight we got here, you think? Oh yeah, that's a good 80 pounds, maybe 90, perfect. Let's go ahead and put our old, uh, you know, winch on, heck yeah. Looking good. She's coming together. Don't you just love it when a plan, come back here, washer. A plan comes together. I'm not gonna tighten these down just yet because I wanna, if in case I need to have some room to put the other uh, pieces of rubber in up here or make any adjustments, I wanna have uh, some slack to be able to do that. So no, cinch in, no sense in cinching it down tight yet. All right, looking good so far. Now, the only other thing I've got is my spare tire holder. Now, you don't want your spare tire on the side that all your crank handles are on, right? I got a crank handle up here, I got a crank handle down here. And so I want the spare tire on this side out of the way of everything else.
Well, let's just stand back and take a look at the proportions of this trailer now and see if anything looks way out of line. Wow, this has got a wide angle on her. So as you can see now, we've got the trailer down on its wheels. We've got our winch, trailer jack, and our wheel mount. And see how far back the wheels are on this trailer? Now I probably have now with that on the front an easy, easy 100 pounds of tongue weight. That might sound like a lot. Maybe it's 125. That might sound like a lot, but as soon as I hang a 150 pound motor back here, outboard, that's gonna make a big difference. And then fuel is gonna go in the back, then a pass, you know, that's gonna be how it's traveling. So that might still maintain 75 pounds of tongue weight by the time I have all my gear in the boat. But if you look at that boat, for instance, and look at the, how far toward the back the rear wheels are and the tongue weight that I'm carrying down, and then you look at the one I pulled home the other day. The old boat here. Now look how, look how far ahead of the rear of the boat that axle is. And you gotta keep in mind from like right here, there's a hump. Right where that hump's at inside there, that's where about 450 to 500 pounds of engine and out driver hanging out way back there. So that's why it has currently has neutral tongue weight, right? You don't want that. That's that's a recipe for disaster. This guy looking pretty sweet. Now some of you might be asking yourselves. Why was that cover taking up so much space hanging down so far? Well, let me show you a little something. Because once I've got this boat on a trailer storing it at home. Look at that. You see what I'm seeing here? Look at that. I ain't look at it. Did you look at it? Just look at it. Cool part about this now is I can cover up my winch and my strap and all the, you know, all the me mechanisms under here. Guess what ain't gonna get rusty and sun faded and corroded? The winch, protected. Can you beat it? No. There's always a method to some of my madness, but not all of it. All right. You guys hear that owl? Listen. We got a lot of owls around here. This time of night, they start talking. Woo, 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 woo. Think you'll talk back to me? Come on, birdie, birdie, birdie. Oh, now he's gonna go radio silent. Yeah, covert action going on with the owls. All right, must be a big hunt going on tonight. All right, all we got left to do here now is work on the butt end of this thing. So we'll take a quick look and I'll give you some ideas. We're gonna back this up toward the shop because we're gonna have to do some welding and some other stuff of that nature. I know we're getting low light here, but what I wanna be able to do here, I wanna take these tail light, this is bolted on here. I wanna take it off and straighten it out, clean it up, paint it, and these things here, that are just a nasty mess. I'm gonna take the leftover, the old tongue, and I'm gonna weld that tongue onto the side of here, get rid of all this mounting hardware, and have it come up, and then I'll put these, these things here, I can just weld these, cut this off, and weld it right to my piece. So I'll have more of a rigid guide post, you know? That way when I'm loading it up in a river, or a high wind, this is gonna be solid, I can just run it in there and Wham, bam, she's loaded like a man. Nice. All right. Next order of business, we gotta get this thing hooked up to the Jeep. We're gonna back it around and see if I can get the rear end of this thing in there so I can do some more work on it. That's gonna be the fun part. Now, as my wife would tell you, I don't like honey-do lists, but I do like lists of projects I need to do to get done. So the cool part is install hubs and tires done, winch mount done, winch done, spare tire mount done. Oops, 
got two bolts on the trailer. You remember when I went back to get that third cross member? I put two bolts in there. I got to get some washers and nuts on them and tighten them down. I got the bolts in there. But the nice thing is it's still as good as it was. Those two bolts and everything make it better. So yeah, we got two bolts to tighten up, tail lights, guide post. Then we can put some stickers on it, some numbers on it, and take it to the lake. As soon as the, as soon as the weather just gets, hangs out above 50 for more than 10 minutes. We can get her to a lake, get an engine on the back, an outboard on the back of it, and just, let's just see what the first outboard can do. Well, it's actually sunny out. Still kind of cold, but the wind's not crazy. So that's making it kind of tolerable out right now. With that being said, let's get the new rubber pieces put on here. These look a little bit beefier. Now these are three inch thick versus these I think were two and three quarter. I thought I was gonna just get the same size, but good luck finding. You now some of this stuff is just, let's just call it what it is. It's old and hard as a rock. So we'll see how these pan out. I have to slide some things back a little bit. I don't mind the three inch because it gives me just a little more room for the old hooky hook here. Looks pretty centered up right there. Ow! How do you drop a rinse like that and it land right on your big toe? I didn't know I was that accurate. Awesome. Now I do have nylock nuts on these that uh because I can only get them so tight, you know, the rubber's not gonna let you can squeeze it till you just mash the rubber and split it. This way here I can tighten it down till the thread's poking through the nut and that'll hold her. Now this I'm going to go ahead and tighten down because it's at the angle I wanted at now. And that way it'll just stay there. Well, cool beans. So that's nice and tight. With that tight and in place, I can actually tighten down this whole apparatus now. Now I don't know what you guys do, but I know what I do when I'm Oh yeah. When I'm playing around with stainless nuts with stainless bolts, if you try to impact them down sometimes they'll just uh they'll seize up on you. So I like to put a little never seize on there. And then it seems to treat me a lot better. I'll tell you what, so far I'm a fan of this. It looks like galvanized paint almost from Rust-Oleum, but uh, I'm not hating it. Never Seize is a good name for this stuff, but it also might ought to be called Get That Crap Everywhere.
Nice. I'm gonna sit on the wet ground here. Now you got one of these blankets still in the bag. Leave it in the bag. We got moisture protection between the blanket and the ground. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Pretty good. Solid. Oh yeah. That's going nowhere, baby. I liked it. Now I'm not sure what this little dealy bop here was, but I had this piece of foam over it to protect my trailer. No, trailer's fine. To protect my cover. But I'm not sure what it would ever be used for. Unless it was a tie-off line or has one hole in it and an angle plate that's just aggravating. Looks like something I could hit my leg on or trip me up getting off the boat. And it's just spinning and spinning. Guess we'll get the old grinding wheel a hold of that. There we go. Now I got these bolts sticking up. Not anymore. Oh man, there's no black paint under there. What am I gonna do? Well, we're gonna say it's good enough. That's what we're gonna say. All right, we're getting there. I know the lighting isn't the best, but you can see here that this is now missing all this. Now for the real test, the real, real test. The plan was for this whole rig to be able to swing here. Look at that. Misses everything by a long ways. You gotta be happy with that. Here's our other hitch that I modified. That's going in the back here. Yep, there we go. Put our, our floor mat back in, but yeah. This is pretty sweet. Now those safety chains probably need to be shortened up a little bit more. But you can also put a couple twists in them, which will take some height up too. Yeah, that's uh, the way she's supposed to be. Now, I did find online, I haven't ordered them yet. In the previous video, I did say I ordered them, so I did fib a little bit. But I do have them in my box that says, from the center of the pin to the center of the ball, they were um, 12 inch. Which 12 inch would move me in two inches from where I'm at, which wouldn't be awful. Right now, I'm from the center of the pin, roughly, to the center of the ball is 14 inch. I do like that better. Now, the truth of the matter is, I haven't cleaned up my shop since the last little project where I welded that manifold and did some odd job stuff. But, it's the, because it's the very next day and the sun's out, and I've only got a few hours before the weather I mean, it suns out, but it's still cold as I'll get out out here, right? So what I'm gonna do is back this on in here so I can work it out here out of the weather and get those tail lights taken off, those other little cross pieces taken off, you know, stuff like that. So let's get started. I'm gonna grain this while it's outside. I have some serious doubts about these U-bolts coming off that hold on those guide bars. And if I use those guide bars, it'll be for just using them for the rollers themselves, but I'm not sure I want rollers because I don't care how what I do to these things. I don't like a trailer that rattles a lot going down the road and that would just bug the snot out of me. So let's go ahead and cut these off if I can.
Let's get some PB on there. Time to get this jacket off. What temperature is it out right now? No wonder I'm burning up. It's 39 degrees. Oh, son of a gun. Let's get a little PB on there. Got a couple bolts to take off to get them lights off. Do have this tail light is bent that way a little bit. Looks like it got maybe, you know, it hit something. Yep, it sure did. Uh, what do I got? I wonder if my baby sledge will do it. squared back up as you can see it also is an instant tail light remover this one hasn't been bent in but will it remove the tail light that fast I didn't hit that very hard that was not held on by much <laughs> I'll tell you that all right We're gonna get the half inch Ugga Dugga on it because I think it's gonna need all of it. You know, part of this bolt that I'm looking at it is holding the back cross member up right here. If I take this off, the whole boat's gonna drop. I'm pretty certain of it. Might have to get my jack underneath there for sure. Well, the good news is the bolt stayed in. This piece came loose. This is the piece I wanted. We got wiring. I'm just gonna pull this wiring out. I run a fish tape through there to get all that back. A little animal was living in there. We'll just leave that bolt there and I think we'll be okay. Let's get the other side off. That came off way too easy, but I'll take it. There's enough things in this world that'll fight you. Nice when something goes right, yeah. Well, that one came off nicely too. Are you kidding me? Now what I did notice is these bolts were galvanized. That's why they weren't rusted on. Now the nuts were rusty as all get out. But that's okay. I'm just putting a couple on hand tight in case I forget. And you know, pull this to Canada or something and forget about it. it could happen. Let's just go ahead and hit these little rusty areas with the wire wheel. Knock some of the flake off. Have you guys ever used this stuff? Rust-Oleum Rust Performer, it said. A rust reformer instantly converts rust to a protected paintable surface. So, that's as good a place to test it as any, I guess. 
We're just going to go ahead and spray everything down that's rusty. Got to be careful to mask that fender off so I don't get any on it. You guys must be thinking, God, what a hack. Well, you know, I'm just trying to make it good enough. Well, let's see how much how much this works or if it helps or does anything at all. No extra charge for the runs. Awesome. Okay, everybody, it's time to get busy on these tail lights. Now, I've got the old original tail light brackets de rusted, rust converted, and painted, you know, freshly dipped galvanized. Yeah, that's, we took it to the galvanizing store and tsh, tsh, there you go, galvanized for your viewing pleasure. Okay, now we're not only gonna have the tail lights. On the back of the trailer down low, I want some guide, you know, some what, guide post, whatever you call them. And I'm going to repurpose the old three inch trailer tongue. Probably going to be the sturdiest guide post put on any boat. It's ridiculous, but it's the metal that I have, so it's the metal that I'm going to use. So let's get after what I'm going to do. And we're also going to cut it out and use. Where does it go? What do I do with it? Here they are. So on the top of our guide post, we're going to also put tail lights. So when you're back in the boat down in the water, or, you know, not at night so much, but when you're pulling it in and it's after dark and low visibility, you'll know exactly where your guide posts are because they're going to be above the water, above the water line and bright red. And I think that'll be good enough. All right. Now, I'll tell you a tool. Well, the air blows out right there, right in my face. Uh, one of the tools that I purchased recently from Hobo Freight. Now, I am not sponsored by Hobo Freight. Harbor Freight. It's just easier to say hobo than harbor. Hobo Harbor. Anyway, this is a, their bandsaw they have. Their spot was $129, variable speed. I've been using it quite a bit lately, and I tell you, since my plasma cutter took a poop on me, uh, and I gotta get, I either gotta get the old ESOB that's 15 years old fixed, or buy a new one, because, you know, an, a plasma cutter, you don't use that often, but man, when you have it, and use it, you love it, and when you don't have it, you miss the living crap out of it. But, Mr. Bandsaw has stepped in here, and I've also got a cutoff bandsaw I could use to cut this angle as well. But I'm cutting this at an angle so that, you know, sits on the trailer. I'm going to weld it in place. You know, just the normal stuff, right? So we're going we're gonna to do the angle cut. Should be good for both sides. And we're going to do the cutout for the light. And we're going to see how it fits. And I hope it all works. Let's just get down here and get busy cutting and go for it. I, I ain't scared. I ain't scared a bit. So I'm going to use this to cut my angle cut. Let's just see how it does. Line up on my mark.
Now, I left that in real time on purpose because I wanted you to see. I'm scared something's going to run out and bite me here. There's, there's stuff in there. But I wanted you to see in real time what it took to cut. This is not quite 3 16 small. It's like 163 thousandths thick, three inch square tubing. And I've used this. This is still the original blade. I've cut through a lot of stuff already. I must have the voice activated shut off on the old GoPro. Anyway, I wanted to show you how fast that cut. And man, I, I followed my, easy to follow my lines I had laid out. I mean, I couldn't have done it any better on my other saw. That worked fast and easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, I have the, the layout on here. And I've got me some bimetal hole saws. So I got, this is I believe a two and a half inch. Bada bada bing, bada bing, bing, bing. Two and a half inch hole saw that I'm gonna go right in here and go hole sawing to get my outer ends cut. Cause normally I'd want to plasma cut this, but I'm gonna go ahead and hole saw it, hole saw it, and then I'll connect it with my death wheel. So let's get this over to the old, uh, Drill press, and let's get a hole saw hole in there. We're going to go ahead and slow down the arpums here because I want it to not go too fast. I don't want to burn up my hole saw. I like to do more than a half a hole, you know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and take this down to a lower RPM. Now I'm just going to use some PB plaster for some spray lube. Why not? Oh, come on. Okay, this thing don't have enough horsepower. Now that for sure is cool. Now some of you might say, Michael, why don't you cap this off? Nope. I got left the bottom actually overhanging the front or the inside a little bit down there, about a quarter inch or more, maybe more like half inch, looking down through here. That's all the water can get out. It can come in, but it can also get out. And, uh, and it's, I'm gonna total my boat if I hit this, so. It's strong, but it's, you know, this is above the boat. So typically this would be above the water line because honestly, if this is below the water line, you know, this here's below the water line, uh, this boat's not gonna, you know, it's gonna be below water here. It's not gonna work is what I'm saying. Maybe it will. I don't know, it's a roller trailer, right? But yeah, one down, one to go. I like how that turned out. We got that. Took a little bit of grinding and fitting to get that to go in there, but she's there now. And she ain't gonna pop out too easy. Hit, hit, hit. If I have to, I'll glue it in. I will. I'll do it, don't try me. 
I need to pull this back out in the yard for tonight. I can't leave the door open. The heater's going to run all night. Let's stand back here and look at it. Oh, yeah. You know, by the time that light's there and the other light, where'd my stuff go? Why do I keep losing my stuff? Come on now. Where are you? I just moved it. But I know I moved it in a very memorable spot. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Can you see it? Oh, baby. That's going to look good enough. She thinks my trailer's sexy. It really turns her on. <laughs> I like it. We'll be all lit up like a Christmas tree. Nobody's going to rear end me. That's for darn sure. <laughs> well, I won't bore you with the other side and I won't bore you with the wiring because the wiring's easy and you guys see me do wiring plenty of times. Whoa. Right there. Did you see that? Right there. It's an albino puma. It's coming in the shop. Come here, albino puma. Come on. Yeah, come here. Look in here for mice. It's one of my yard lions. Keeps the mouse population down. Oh, yeah, she's in here checking things. Oh, that's, that's a he. That's a boy. He's in here checking things out. Yeah. All right. I'm liking how that's going. This will keep the trailer or boat guided on the trailer. It's not gonna touch the trailer while it's going down the road because I will have some things that come down from under here and come up here and ratchety, 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 tightens this down. Yep, that'll be perfect. I like what we got going on here so far. This is turning out to be something awesome. All right, we'll be back when I got the other side done and maybe after the lighting's done because then all that's left is wiring and uh, you know, putting some gear in the boat. Then as soon as it's warm enough, I can get on the water. We can test out a few outboards. I'm excited about that. Well, everybody, I'm out here after dark for a reason. We got the trailer lighting done. We had drugged the boat off the trailer onto the ground and, you know, finished welding up all the stuff. And then we ended up uh, hooking up all my trailer lights, even a couple of marker lights. Uh, I think it turned out great. All I got left to do to the trailer is a few more hooks to tie the, uh, you know, boat uh, cover down and we'll be done. But let's take a quick walk around and take a look at what we got done here. Now, as you can see here, nothing special. The same old trailer tongue. But then, ba bam look at that. We got a yellow marker light on the front of the fender. And then we're walking around here. I think you guys are going to like this. Check it out, check it out. We got LED lights in the, in the oblong uprights. And we got them down below. But I think that turned out really cool, really visible at night. Let me turn on the flashers and show you how bright those flashers are. I'm just walking out behind it here. You can see how much light it casts. But yeah, you can definitely see how bright that is. Now, the cool part is those upper lights should be out of the water. Because typically when you go into water, your fenders are just, you know, barely underwater. And these things are about a foot and a half above the fenders. So, should be pretty darn cool. I like how it turned out. We finally got this trailer 99% done. Like I said, some hooks. And uh, that's about it. Well, folks, I'm going to wrap this video up. I appreciate all of you watching and staying all the way to the end. If you did, you know, many thanks. Don't forget to subscribe. Throw that thumbs up out there. And let's just keep this channel growing and going. Man, that boat trailer took longer than I ever expected it to. You know, that's something that should have taken what you think would be a weekend. Took probably 
four weekends, maybe five weekends all together. There's just lots of little stuff you keep doing and you just keep going, I need to do this, I need to do that. And, you know, and I was trying to keep in my mind, don't overdo it, Michael. Don't overdo it. It'll make it good enough. Well, I think it's good enough now. Uh, this probably will be the boat that makes the, I can't really say that, but it might be, it might be the boat that makes the most trips to the lakes this summer, just for the simple reason, every time I get an outboard done, I'm going to want to put it on the back of that boat, take it to the lake and run her in and make sure she's good enough for myself or somebody else. If it doesn't measure up for me, it doesn't measure up for somebody else. That's the way I roll. And as you guys know, a lot of you have asked, you know, a lot of you have been out there leaving comments and sending me emails, hey, would you work on my boat? Would you help me with my boat? Can you do, and I'm like, sorry. And I'm saying it out here, I don't do customer work. You know, I've said it before in other videos, everything you work, see me work on is something I've purchased. I'll work on it, and if I decide to sell it, I'll sell it. Some of the times it's at a loss, sometimes it's at a profit, just depends on what it is. But uh, we got a lot of things done in this video, I feel. Uh, shop, I gotta spend an hour probably just getting my shop back in order again, just to, you know, I'm gonna, my next project is this guy's right back here, SCI Marine Products. I gotta get their banner up a little higher, a little more, a little more centrally located. But I got some stuff from them that I wanna put on my, I'm gonna call it my OG, the original, original gangster boat. My first boat that I bought in 2017 that started this whole channel craziness that got me working on boats and then decided I need to help other people fix their boats and started videoing it. And uh, we're gonna bring that one back around. We're gonna put a new outdrive on it. We got trim pumps for it. We got lift cylinders for it. We're really gonna make this rear into this, you know, the outdrive of this boat like brand new again. And then we're gonna put it on the water. So stay tuned to upcoming videos on that project. Uh, there might be there probably going to be two to three videos minimum just getting that thing squared away. But there's a lot of you that's asked the question, how do I pull my outdrive off? I'm going to go into, I would call, let's just call it great detail. Because I don't want you to screw things up. Because you can screw something up on the back of that taking it off that can cost you even more money. And you're already into it for some money because you're pulling it off anyway, right? Oh, well, enough of that. That's coming up. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And by golly, we're going to get some more stuff done around here. And man, we had, this is, this is crazy weather we've been having. Last night, it was supposed to rain. Wake up this, this morning, over two inches of snow on the ground. Wet, heavy snow on the ground. By this afternoon, got up to 50 degrees, gone. Supposed to do that, maybe something similar to that tonight. That's, that's... Makes it hard to get outside stuff done. It also makes it, let's just see if it says anything funny here. Maybe it's moving on. Oh, now they moved off to rain Sunday. That's good. High of day was 53. But yeah, that was crazy. Oh, well. It makes it hard to move boats around in my grass in the yard because, you know, the marina is going to need a big steel roller pulled around the yard. I think this, as soon as things get settled down a little bit, and uh, just to flatten the yard back out again so I don't rattle my teeth when I mow it. All right. We're moving on to the next project. Get out there. Just remember, do a little bit every day. An hour a day. Gets 365 hours worth of stuff done. That's just simple math, right? Well, hey, kitty, kitty. Got me a shop lion in here. Are you ready to go back outside? You, do you find anything to eat? Huh? Guessing that's a no. All right. Be good. Be kind. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.